quick reminder, inshallah ta'ala, for myself and for my beloved brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an have told us how much Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa loves us. And he told us that he will intercede for his ummah on the day of judgment. The shafa'ah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah make us all from the people who will get his shafa'ah. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. So as Muslims and believers that love Rasulullah sallallahu and who are so behind in their duties to Allah azza wa jal, we are desperate for his shafa'ah. So listen carefully. There are five people that will never get the shafa'ah of Rasulullah sallallahu So today we will mention them to try to avoid them. Who are these five kinds of people that will not get the shafa'ah of the person whom Allah said, Bil mu'minina ra'ufun rahim. First, whomsoever commits shirk. And I'm not talking about a mushrik. That mushrik is not going to see the, <laughs> it's not going to see the jannah anyway. I'm talking about a Muslim committing acts of shirk. What's the evidence? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he said, every Nabi, every messenger was given a, an answered dua. Allah offered every Nabi, say whatever you want and you got it. Fata'ajjalaha, every Nabi got his own and I saved mine for my ummah to the day of judgment. And I will cover all my ummah except the one who commits shirk. Like, unfortunately, we all know in our countries, people who go to the qubur, go to the graveyards, and they ask the people who are dead for help. The people who go to the fortune teller, fortune teller, what is she claiming or what is he claiming? He's claiming that he knows the unseen, sah. He knows the ghayb. So that is, and the only one who knows the ghayb is Allah. So now there's a partner in knowing the ghayb, which is that guy, and you went there to ask him for something. So you have committed an act of shirk. You are a Muslim, you're still saying la ilaha illallah, but you have committed an act of shirk. And you be, if you believe, listen to this, Rasulullah said, if you believe what that fortune teller tell you, فَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ You have left Islam. So the first category that will not get the shafa'ah of Rasulullah are the ones who have committed shirk or they are committing shirk on a regular basis. Not as someone who committed one time and then he asked for forgiveness. Absolutely, this is alhamdulillah that there's something called tawbah. Maybe some of us here have went to these things and made tawaf around the grave and all that stuff. And alhamdulillah, you can ask Allah for forgiveness and then do it again and you will be saved. Second, Sanfan min ummati la tana lahuma shafa'ati Imamun zalum Imamun zalum wa mariq wa ghalin mariq wa ghalin mariq What does that mean? Two kinds of people Here this one will include two people So we have one, two, three Two kinds of people will not Two, two kinds of people of my ummah Will not earn my shafa'a Imam zalum Imam here does not necessarily mean an imam who leads the salat. Any leader, any leader, king, president, father, principal, imam, amir of a masjid, anyone who has been given the authority and his zaloom, he is an oppressor. He did not treat his people with, with adl, with justice. He will not get the shafa'ah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanallah, if you look at our, most of our countries, if not all of them, look at our leaders, ya akhi. Is there any more zulm? You see a people with billions of dollars and people have no place to stay and no, no food to eat. And even what we are seeing right now in Gaza, subhanallah, my next door neighbor is a Muslim. My next door neighbor is a Muslim and he's not providing me with water. With water. He's depriving me from the basic necessities of life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said a woman entered Jahannam because she deprived a cat, a cat, from food and water. 
How about depriving a nation, two million people, if a cat led a person to the hellfire? Imam al-Zalum, a person has been assigned. That's why, why do you think Rasulullah said, you know, do not fight for, for leadership. Do not ask, I want to become a leader. No, Habibi, you don't know what you're getting into. You will be questioned about every single person in your, under your authority. How did you treat them? Be very careful. That's why the Sahaba and the righteous, they used to run away. They used to run away. Sufyan al-Thawri spent all his life. Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, spent all his life doing what? Running away from Amir al-Mu'mineen who wants to what? To beat him? No, he wants to put him the major judge. The judge of all the judges, Qadi al Qudat, running away not to get the job of supreme judge because he's scared. So, Imam al Zalim, and the second one, a person who, listen carefully, we all commit sins, but there's a person who commits sins and he or she does not care. He stands at the door of the masjid and he smokes. Allah is testing you with smoking. Hide somewhere and smoke. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He posts his picture drinking alcohol. He posts his picture, it's my girlfriend. He's openly disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal. Openly. Openly. Proud. Proud. He's a Muslim. He did not leave Islam yet because he's just uh, committing a kabira. Huh? But. He is proud of his major sins. And he has ghulu. What does ghulu mean? Ghulu means go to extreme in the deen. We have a misconception. Look at this, two people, Allah, Rasulullah said, a person who has ghulu in the deen and a person who openly disobey Allah. The one with ghulu Rasulullah said two word hadith, Halakal mutanatti'un, perish, destroyed are the extremists. But who's the extremist? The extremist is not the ones that you think they are extreme. Because sometimes one, uh, one of our brothers, African American brother, he took shahada and mashallah he became better than us. So one time he's telling his family, Alhamdulillah, I read Surah Al Kahf every Friday. You are extremist. So extreme is not according to, to your extreme. Some people think that people who do not listen to music are extreme. Some people, yani it's not the definition of what you think is extreme. Extreme means the three people who came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked Aisha about his worship. And they kind of belittled Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi worship. They found it like, one of them said, I fast every single day. And the other said, I up, I'm up all night. I don't sleep. And the third said, I stay away from women because women distract you from the deen, from your ibadat. When Rasulullah found out, come over here. I am the best among you. I fast and I break my fast. I pray to Hajjud and I sleep. And I marry women. And this is my sunnah. Whomsoever is away from my sunnah is not from us. This is ghulu. And Rasulullah told us about the ghulu, extremism, even, look at this, look how careful he was of us going to extreme. A, a, a person brought to him a stone to throw jamarat, to throw jamarat. He looked at the stone, and we all know that the stone has to be maximum by the chickpea size, right? Okay, so they brought a stone a little bit bigger. Not like, you know, you know, now you see a guy carrying a rock, and then he's like, like a bowling, you know. So... He looked at the stone and he said, this is too big. Be very careful of extremism. It ruined the people before you. Extremism in a stone. <laughs> in a stone, just because it was bigger than the normal size. So the third, the second is a person who has ghulu, and the third is a person that openly disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. The fourth person Rasulullah said, Man Whomsoever deny, and Wallahi, I witnessed it with my own eyes. A person came to me and he was, may Allah forgive him. He was sarcastically, oh, Do you really believe that there is something called shafa'a? I said, Yeah, absolutely. 
He started laughing and he left. Wallahi, look at this hadith. Whomsoever does not believe in my shafa'a, laysa lahu fiha nasib. Whomsoever does not believe I'm going to intercede, he will not get my shafa'a. Okay, you, you got it. This is what you believe, this is what you will get. So the shafa'a is confirmed that Rasulullah will be a shafi'a, right? And the fifth one, last one, hadith that we all know. Rasulullah sallam next to his hawd. And may Allah make us from the people who will drink from his hand. And everybody's drinking from there. And then some people came. And then all of a sudden, the angels, what happened? Pushed him away. So Rasulullah sallam said, no, 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 these are ashabi. These are my, my companions. He said, ya Rasulullah, you do not know what bid'as they started after you. So Rasulullah sallam say, suhqan, suhqan, get away from here, get away, go away. Starting and innovating in the deen. Starting new things in the deen as if we have completed all the things and we want some more stuff to do. Ya akhi, let's finish the, the things that we are supposed to do. Why do you want to invent in the deen? Why do you want to come up with new stuff in the deen? The safest thing is to follow what Rasulullah Sallallahu told us, this is an action that he did, Alhamdulillah, do not add, do not subtract, do as much as you can, but do not invent new things in the deen and belittle them. And sometimes when, when an innovation starts, people go to get very upset. Oh, you are an extremist, you think that this is haram to do this? Huh? My father used to do this, my grandfather. Ya yeah, Habibi, since when your grandfather is a musharra, he is the one who's making sharia. <laughs> so we take our culture and we make the culture go above the deen. Just because I saw these people do it in my country, it became khalas, it's a must. How many times or how many of us, Wallahi, I'm one of them, the whole deen changed when we came to America. Our whole concept and understanding of the real Islam was here because we were told that this is it. Nothing else, everybody else is wrong. You have to follow this, that's it. So be careful, ya akhwan, of innovation. And it's not a coincidence that Rasulullah Sallallahu every single Friday, at every minbar, in every masjid, wa kulla bid'atin dalala, wa kulla dalalatin finnar. Is that a coincidence? Every single Friday, every bid'ah is gonna lead you go astray. Because soon, like for example, one, uh, one brother, after he finished the salat, the taslim, Allahumma salli loud. So I came to him and I said, brother, <laughs> what is this? He said, what's wrong with the salat on Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Salat on Rasulullah is haram? I said, no, absolutely, it's an act of worship. But here in loud voice in the masjid, you're doing it. Where did they say that? Did Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say after you finish the salat, loudly say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad? He said, I know you're kind. You people. I said, Yaqeeb, before you start you people and me people, and let me ask you a question. After you finish Subhan Rabbi al Azim, why don't you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad? He said, because Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not do it. <laughs> I said, Allahu Akbar. So did he do the other one? <laughs> he said, no. I said, why did you do it? All my country does it. And he left and angry. All my country does it. So you see, the deen starts like this, okay? Now my son is looking at me screaming, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad after that. Then he comes and he starts doing it. And then maybe he added something, uh, wa salli ala Ibrahim, and he starts something. And his son saw that. Give it 10, 15 years, everything will be different. That's why it's so dangerous to, to add to the deen. So quickly, ya akhwan, the one who innovate, the one who goes to extreme, the one who uh, does the sins openly, the one who denies that there is shafa'a, and what was the first one? Shirk. Huh? shirk, the shirk. All five of them, may Allah keep us all away from them. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya عليه وسلموا تسليما
ان الذين يؤذون الله ورسوله لعنهم الله في الدنيا والاخره واعد لهم عذابا مهينا والذين يؤذون المؤمنين والمؤمنات بغير ما اكتسبوا فقد احتملوا بهتانا وإثما مبينا